Hi, my name is Terry Brown. I'm a mechanical engineer and lecturer at university. And in this video, I'm going to go through the solution of this engineering mechanics problem. So the first thing to do is to read through the question and to understand the problem. So we see that we have a woman on uh, an exercise rowing machine. And we're told that she exerts a holding force of 200 newtons on the handle. So we can see that down here. And we're asked to determine the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at pin C. So usually I like to highlight that. So determine the horizontal and vertical components of reaction at pin C. And we're also asked to de determine the force developed along the hydraulic cylinder BD. Okay, so we've got this cylinder here, BD, that we want to know uh, what the force is that's being developed in that component. Okay, so let's consider what our solution uh, approach will be. So as with most um, engineering mechanics problems, first thing to do is to draw a free body diagram. And we need to determine what we're going to draw the free body diagram of. And in this case, because we want to know the force that the cylinder exerts on the handle, a, B, C, and we want to know what the reaction force at C will be on the handle A, B, C, then the thing that we draw the free body diagram of is that handle A, B, C. So once we've done that, the next step would be to apply our equations of equilibrium. And then once we've done that, solve for our unknown reaction forces using those equations. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our free body diagram. So I've just um, included here the picture from the previous page so we can easily refer to it. And we start by drawing a free body diagram of the, the handle. So what we've done is to remove everything that's connected to it. So the cylinder at B, the support, pin support at C, and also the, the woman's hands at A. So once we've done that, uh, we can add in some of our dimensions for easy reference and labelled the points where things are happening, where forces are applied. And we can start adding in the forces. So usually the first place to start would be to add in uh, the force or the loads. So here we're told we've got a force of 200 newtons acting at the handle and that acts at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, um, the other thing that we can look at is the fact that um, this hydraulic cylinder here is a two-force member in equilibrium. So what that tells us is that uh, because it's pin connected at the two ends and there's no other forces acting on this component, assuming that the weight is negligible relative to all the other forces, then for this thing to be in equilibrium, the force at B and the force at D must be equal and opposite co and collinear. So therefore we know the direction of the force at B. Okay, so here in our free body diagram we've drawn that line connecting B and D and so therefore we'll know the sense, oh sorry, know the direction of that unknown force at B. Okay, so we put that in and that force is going to resist uh, this force here. So if we imagine we take moments about point C here to start with just to get this sense right. So up here our force applied of 200 newtons is going to tend to rotate this handle clockwise, rotate it around this way about point C. So we'll need the force down here to rotate it anti-clockwise for it to be in equilibrium. So we can see that the sense is going to be acting downwards and to the left. Okay, so then down at uh, C here, we've got a pin connection. So if you go back up and look at our diagram here, it's pin connected, so it can't move away but it can rotate so therefore our forces of constraint or reaction will have a vertical reaction force and a horizontal reaction force. So once we've drawn on those unknown forces we can then go in and label them. So here we've called the force in the hydraulic 
in the hydraulic cylinder R B D. And then down here we've called our horizontal uh, component of the force at C R C X and the vertical component R C Y. Okay, so the next step in our solution is to apply our equations of equilibrium. Usually the best place to start is to use the moment equation because that usually enables us to develop one equation that has only one unknown in it. And we can see here from the equation or the formula that I've written sum of the moments about point C. So a little subscript here indicating that I'm going to take moments about point C and the reason that I do that is because both RCX and RCY both pass through point C so therefore their moment effect will be zero about point C. So then the only unknown that we're going to have in the equation will be our unknown cylinder force RBD. Okay so usually the easiest way to deal with this force is to find its components um, because we're already given horizontal and vertical distances. We could try and work out the perpendicular distance between this point and the line of action of RBD but that could be a little bit tricky trigonomet trigonometrically so uh, here because we're already given all of these distances finding these vertical and horizontal components and then finding the moments of those will be the easiest approach in my opinion anyway. So we've put in the angle there uh, we're not actually given that angle, we're just given some dimensions. So we need to use trigonometry to work that out. So the inverse tan of, um, so we've got here um, 0.25 is this distance here and this distance from D to C is all of this length. So 0.15, uh, sorry don't want all of that length, we just want this length here. So from here to here is the length of the side of this triangle. Okay, So that's going to be 0.9, so the inverse tan of that will give us our angle theta. Okay, so let's start now looking at our forces and their moment effects about point C. So let's start with our load here, our 200 Newton load. Again, uh, probably the easiest thing to do because we're already given all of these vertical and horizontal dimensions is to use the components that I've drawn in here. Now um, one thing that we've had to do is to make an assumption. So in the, the diagram here we're shown that the force is applied at this handle here but we're not given any information about the length or the angle of this little bit that sticks up here. So what I've had to do in order to continue this solution is to assume that this force here passes through point A. Okay, so that this force is actually aligned with this little bit that sticks up. All right, because we're not actually given any information about uh, that little bit of the handle. Okay, so having made that assumption, uh, we can then go ahead and use the components of this force. So we've got the, ho uh, the horizontal component will be 200 cos 30. Okay, so if we look at our little triangle here, right, that's our little right angle triangle, and we want to know this component on this side. So this angle here is 30. This is the adjacent side on our right angle triangle, so the length of this component will be 200 cos 30. So let's get rid of that stuff. Okay, uh, and its perpendicular distance will be the distance from here down to here. So the perpendicular distance to point C. So again, um, if we draw, continue this line of action across here, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of that force to point C is that distance there, which is 0 0.5, which is what I've shown in my equation here. Alright, so now we need to consider whether it's a positive or negative moment. So we've assumed anti-clockwise is positive. Uh, this force here is pushing around to the right. So if you imagine that this is pinned here at C, 
this force here is going to cause this to rotate around in this direction. Okay, so that's going clockwise, so that will be a negative moment. Okay, so we can put in negative there. Oh, let me just go back a bit. Okay, so now we're going to consider the vertical component here. So that will be uh, 200 sine 30 degrees, because it's the right, this opposite side of that little triangle that we looked at. Okay, so and its perpendicular distance will be this distance here. Okay, so there's our line of action of the force. This is our perpendicular distance D, so that will be 0.75 plus, point plus 0.15, which is 0.9. Okay, so now we need to consider um, whether it's a positive or negative moment. So again, if we look at our force here, pushing up, imagine it's pinned at C, this is going to tend to rotate that bar around clockwise, so once again it's a negative moment. Okay, so we put that in there. Okay, so now we need to consider the force here, RBD, and once again we'll use the components. So first off we'll use the horizontal component here, RBD cos of this angle, again okay, because it's the adjacent side of this little triangle here. So RBD cos 15.52 that we found down here times its perpendicular distance and the perpendicular distance this time will be this little distance here which is 0.25. Again let's see whether it's positive or negative moment. So this is our force here. Imagine that, imagine that it's pinned about C so that's going to tend to rotate around like that. So that's an anti-clockwise direction. So this moment is going to be positive. Okay, so we can put that in, in our equation up here. Okay, so now we need to deal with the vertical component here. So that will be RBD sine of this little angle. Okay, so this little side, opposite side of this little triangle. So sine 15.52 and its perpendicular distance. So its line of action is down here. Perpendicular distance to C is this little distance in here, 0.15. And again, consider whether it's uh, positive or negative. So looking here, it's pushing down, pinned about C, so that's going to tend to rotate in that direction. Okay, Tend to rotate anti-clockwise about C. So again, that's a positive moment. Uh, no other forces acting. And our, apart from our reaction forces at C, which pass through point C, so we can now write all of that equals zero. Okay, so now we just need to do some algebra. Uh, we've got one equation, one unknown, uh, but two terms for RBD. So if we do the maths, rearrange the equation, we get 628.4 newtons for RBD. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start using uh, one of the other equations of equilibrium. So here I'm going to use some of the forces in the horizontal direction equals zero with to the right positive. So we'll just work our way through each of the force forces and force components. So starting off with RCX, that's uh, acting to the right, so positive, minus RBD cos 15.2, so this horizontal component, and the horizontal component of the applied force 200, so 200 cos 30, and all of that's equal to zero. So we can now solve for our one unknown RCX because we already solved for RBD up here. So do that and do the maths and you get 432.3 newtons for RCX. If we then go on and use the other equation of equilibrium, some of the forces in the vertical direction equal zero with upwards as positive. Again, just work through all of our forces. So RCY is our unknown. It's acting upwards, so positive. Then we have RBDY acting downwards, which is 
RPD sign 15.52 and plus the vertical component of the applied 200 Newton force so 200 sine 30 all of that's equal to zero so do the maths again and solve for RCY which will give you 68.14 and then finally you can round up your final answers to an appropriate number of an appropriate number of significant figures so usually three and um, write in your answers so RBD the force in the hydraulic cylinder 628 newtons and the reaction forces RCX 432 newtons and RCY 68.1 newtons okay so that's the end of the problem I hope you found that helpful and interesting and I'll see you in the next video